Today we're going to make plantain salve lotion bars because I'm all out of the plantain salve I made last year and I wanted something smaller and more portable to take along with me in my bag. And since it's a rainy day today, this is the perfect day to make it. I'm only going to briefly talk about making the plantain infused olive oil because I already went into more detail in my plantain salve video, which I'll link above, and the oil I used in these lotion bars was left over from that batch. I stored it in the fridge so it wouldn't go rancid. Last year when I made the plantain oil infusion, I first collected the plantain, washed it, dried it, and stuffed it in a quart sized jar, which I then filled with olive oil. Since it was a fresh plant material infusion instead of a dry infusion, I heated it over the stove top for two full days so the oil wouldn't go rancid. If you're using dried plantain, heat isn't required. I explain why and how I heated my infusion in that salve video, so go ahead and check it out if you need more details. This time around, I simply pulled the infused oil out of the fridge and set it on the countertop so it could come to room temperature. The lotion bars require three ingredients. Beeswax, which I bought at a local beekeeping shop. A butter, I chose mango butter and I got it off of Amazon and I'll link it down in the description below. And then the infused oil. For these bars, I decided to add equal parts of each ingredient, but there's no need to be perfect with this recipe. Now for the measurements, I haven't yet found a way to do things perfectly, but I've found a way that works for me. Fluid ounces measure volume and regular ounces measure weight. So that's why this method I'm about to show you isn't perfect. I always have a little extra mixture left over at the end, but it's not enough to bother me. And the lotion bars always come out to my liking. And the leftover mixture never goes to waste. To get an idea of how much of the material I needed, I filled one of the cups with water, then dumped that into a measuring cup on my scale and got a measurement. I then multiplied that by six, and then divided that by three because I wanted relatively equal amounts of each ingredient. I won't bore you on the details of how I broke apart this beeswax, but I will tell you that you'll like yourself a lot better if you break it down into much smaller chunks. I tend to always forget about that fact until I'm trying to melt the wax. The butter is easy to melt, so size doesn't matter, and the oil is oil, so just pour it in. To melt the mixture together, I use a double boiler method. And you don't need a fancy pan for this. I got this little pot at the Goodwill and then I use my Pyrex glass inside. I fill it up with a little bit of water, just enough to submerge the bottom of the Pyrex. And then I put that on the stove and heat it. I use a candy thermometer to monitor the process so I don't overheat anything. I don't know about mango butter, but I was taught that at high temperature, shea butter can become gritty. So I try and keep the temperature around 150 because that's enough to melt the beeswax and not overheat anything. Once everything is melted, I carefully pour it into the clean and dry molds and leave it on the countertop to harden. If you're impatient like me, however, you can also slide a tray underneath the mold and place it in the freezer. But just remember if it hasn't hardened enough first, you've got to make sure it's level so it doesn't spill out everywhere. This was hard enough that I didn't need to care about that. Once it's hardened, you can pop those babies out and start putting them to use. If you decide to make these plantain salve lotion bars, let me know how it went in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And thanks for watching.